Welcome back, and we have John Moore with the latest report. He has his own radio show, uh, 7 to 9 a.m. Central Standard Time, Monday to Friday. Website, thelibertyman.com. And Morrison, our scientist, uh, homeland hyphen, uh, uh, what is it now? And can you give us the full That's website again? Four letter U. Yeah, homeland hyphen defense, number, letter number four, letter U dot com. Um, John, first, uh, tell us what you see going on with, with uh, the well, Boston massacre. Well, here's what I see. Uh, Thank massacre. you for me, Dr. Bill. Um, as many of my regular listeners know, I've, I've been speaking publicly about terrorism, and, and I worked on terrorism for the U.S. Army Special Forces many years ago. The, the general profile that we're concerned about is the following for when it comes to Islamic terrorists. Uh, is Islamic males, Muslim males, between the ages of 18 and 30 years old. Those are the uh, the uh, people we're most concerned about. That's the people Israel is most concerned about. El Al Airline, the Israeli National Airline, of course, uh, when they profile the passengers, they're looking very closely and very carefully at Islamic males between the ages of 18 and 30 years old. Uh, these two young men fit that profile. Their connections with Chuck Me are, are, are somewhat loose. The older boy was 16 when they left. The older boy, the younger boy would have been about nine years old. But apparently in the last five years, they went back to their Islamic heritage and have become devout Muslims. The older boy marrying a Christian girl who secretly converted to Islam uh, without the knowledge of, of, of her family. Uh, and we've seen this before, Dr. Bill, where Islamic males, uh, not necessarily even born in an Islamic country, but uh, young men growing up in native-born Americans, growing up in an Islamic family here in the United States, and and becoming uh, fervent uh, believers. Well, they're actually uh, more dangerous than the ones grown homegrown, and they also are what I call the blue-eyed jihadists. And we need to be right. aware that uh, blue-eyed jihadists, uh, the, the show Homeland on a television miniseries was a good example of that, about a military person kept in a prison and eventually turned to become Muslim after his captors. I think they call it the uh, Stockholm Syndrome. And we see that uh, here. Uh, the situation is these young men were raised basically in America, uh, and we have a, I call a tumor metastases in America in the body of Western civilization, which is Islam. Uh, people might think Islam is great because it's preserved documents and so on through the Middle Ages. The fact is Islam is an extremely dangerous organization that's now amalgaming with uh, the globalist bankers that want to have a reign of tyranny over the planet. And by the way, these people in Islam think they're safe. In fact, many of the Islamic peoples, it's the plan of the globalists to make sure they're fully eliminated at the end of their plan. Right, in other words, right. it's like getting rid of the brown shirts. Right. They're being used as useful dupes for the bankers to accomplish right. their goals, and then they'll be right. eliminated at the end of the day. Right. 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 Now, they make the perfect enemy because of, quote, the fall of the Soviet Union, which, by the way, never fell. It was just as a, my Russian friend says, they changed hats. So we have a situation uh, where, you know, the globalists are tweaking uh, flu viruses, so they're going to have a super flu or a, a coronavirus airborne plague. Uh, we have the collapse of the bond market. Uh, uh, you know, we have situations that are multiply uh, happening here that, you know, people need to realize. We... In addition, in addition, the KGB, the Russian intelligence services, beginning about 40 years ago, infiltrated the, uh, the top Islamic universities and teaching centers and convinced the top Islamic scholars, res- the most respected imams, to be anti-American and anti-Western. And, of course, they, they did so, and they, they've been spreading their poison uh, among all the Islamic peoples uh, to be anti-Western, anti-American now for 40 years, with great success, I might add. Yeah, exactly. Now, And, of course, this problem is we have also the takedown of... Uh, uh, paper gold is uh, is basically crashing. But by the way, if you go to try to buy gold, you can't find it. Find right. a six week wa- wait in order to, to purchase gold. Uh, what it is is they're trying to drive people out of the market. So the institutional buyers using a naked shorting of gold. Uh, the Chinese are not stupid. They've been buying up gold mines like crazy and right. melting down bars so they don't get uh, uh, bars that basically have uh, tungsten uh, covered with gold uh, plating, if you want to call it. So the, the Chinese are fully aware that at some point gold is going to take off because this battle over currencies, this currency war is going to kind of break down. And uh, people need to start prepping. Uh, there's a number of issues here. Uh, what's your take on the whole issue of Boston? Because I see the government planning to put TSA and Homeland Security in every shopping center, every rail station, every bus station, and basically turn everywhere you go into going into the security zone of the airport. 
Right. Well, it, this one incident won't accomplish that. Uh, two or three more similar incidents, yes, we're on the road to that path where TSA will be everywhere. Every large public uh, gathering, uh, all public transportation, bus stations, train stations, uh, rest stops, uh, highway checkpoints, um, you'll see you know, local police supplemented by TSA is what you'll see. And yeah, you know what the Israelis have? Like this. Yeah, that's you what you know doing. what they have in the airports, though? They have an interesting thing. They don't do a big check of you. They ask you questions, and they have you go into a bomb chamber. And if you have a bomb in or on you, they just blow it up, and then they clean out the uh, chamber in Israel. <laughs> it's called a bomb because it's called a bomb disposal chamber. You they put the person in there, and if they happen to have a bomb on them, it's going to blow up uh, very cleanly inside the chamber. Big loud boom through the airport, but otherwise nobody. Well, I've, except I've for the, been these airport uh, in a busy time. Uh, the way these bombs are set up, they have a triggering device where it's a dead man switch where if they release the trigger, it explodes. They don't have to do anything except let go of it. And, right. and the moment they think they're about to be apprehended, all they need to do is let go of it, and that's the end of it. Yeah. 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 Now, the, uh, there's a couple other things converging. We have the uh, rise of an avian swine flu or coronavirus. We have the, um, a, the basically the collapse of the financial system that's very imminent. We have a Middle Eastern war that's also regional right now, and they continue to try to push on uh, Bashar al-Assad, who said now that you're, it's going to backfire, now that you're supporting al-Qaeda. is a good example. We have two Muslim men. Uh, the story seems to hold water that basically this is a first of many attacks by Islam. I believe the timeline for an attack by Israel against Iran now is very short because it's proven now. The fools that thought that North Korea didn't have weapons that could deliver anywhere on the planet and deorbit them and then either cause an EMP or strike any territory with miniaturized nukes or bring them in on a container through Mexico or just cause an EMP off our coast is a time of the past. People need to realize that if, if North Korea has these weapons, so does Iran. And probably Syria, too. They destroyed the Syrian nuclear reactor, and you'd be guaranteed that not only Saudi Arabia, but Iran and Syria probably have some form of at least some nukes, uh, whether it's battlefield nukes or just Absolutely. dirty bombs. Well, and uh, at the very least, they have Cobalt 60. Well, Doctor, yeah, before ahead. I turn it over to you and Ann, we, we need to, people need to be advised. There literally could be dozens of two-man, three-man teams similar to these young men up in Boston that spread out all over the United States easily. Right. Very yeah. And, and what, what's happening, many of these are coming through, and because Pedro looks a lot like uh, these Islamic guys, they can't tell the difference. And they're probably, uh, what I've heard is from my reports, is that uh, the lack of security across the border has allowed thousands and tens of thousands of probably Islamic terrorists to enter the country with not only bioweapons but with intentions and special skill sets so they can actually cause havoc. Right. Well, and, keep, in uh, mind, are, these, keep in mind, these young men are Caucasian. They, they look like any other plain old red-blooded American. They, they're very Caucasian. Yeah, but there's also ones that look Hispanic as well. So if they're not Caucasian, there's a right. large Hispanic population well, now. If, so if, yeah. if Saddam Hussein had a big belt buckle and a cowboy head, he'd probably still be alive. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, I, as I, I, as I, I said wanna, before... I'm, I'm going to bail out of here, Dr. Bill, and leave it turn over to you and Ann. Yeah, I appreciate it. Uh, so Thank the development you, looks to looks like that they're, they're not throwing the Patriot uh, switch on this particular terrorist activity, but you can guarantee they're going to try to increase TSA and Homeland Security with the latest ramp up because you know the war is going to get going here shortly with Israel is probably going to make a preemptive attack and your comments about what's going on in uh, terms of earthquakes there's a big 7.2 off of Russia and, and Japan and a lot more what's happening there well that was a um, that was a uh, <laughs> that was a big one all right it was a little bit north of Japan and they're calling it a um, um, Russian earthquake, you know, it's, it's kind of at the end of the Aleutian Islands, so that right. means that it's on the, you know, the Aleutian Islands go out from Alaska and they end up over close to Russia, and they call them over there, they call them the Kuril Islands, the Kurils. And, that's and by the way, that's part of the North American plate interacting with the Asian plate. Yes, it's part of the, they're on the North American plate, the, and the Pacific plate, the North Pacific plate, plate yeah. comes up between them. Right. Welcome back, and um, and there's um, a number of uh, interesting anomalies. But I want you to go on with some of the science. Uh, the 
there's an interesting report here from uh, uh, John Spring, who I want, I've had on the program before. He's uh, a little difficult to get on the program, but he sends me regular reports that I think are pretty remarkable. And uh, one of the things he did is he sent me an analysis, which I'm going to post up in terms of the uh, uh, North Koreans. We have basically, I'm just going to summarize what his report said, North Korea has the capacity to strike anywhere in the contiguous 48 lower states, the United States. Uh, the fact is that North Korea is, uh, indicates that the timeline in terms of an Israeli attack on Iran is now very short or imminent. Uh, that means that it's probably going to happen by the summer, at the very latest. Uh, despite the lies, because you have Takiya and Maruna from Islam, uh, they do have an intention to wipe out most of the free open society we have in the West, including Europe, Britain, the United States, Canada, and Australia, New Zealand. We have now realized that the Islam is now making major alliances with communist Russia and China. And uh, that's not a good thing. It means that we're lining up for the players in a World War III scenario. Uh, we have nuclear missiles that are intermediate range that are based in the Guatemalan Mexican jungle. We have a large amount of nuclear missiles in Venezuela, which is now uh, taken over by Maduro, who is actually a Muslim. But people don't realize he's a Muslim convert. We now have these Muslims that have shown up, <clears throat> uh, and I would say whether they are uh, wind-up toys from the CIA or some other operation, the fact is Islam, in all of its forms, in all of the places around the world, is dangerous. And we haven't uh, bit the bullet of doing proper screening where we actually take Islamic people that are male between 18 and 30, or I would say 18 to probably 60, and take them off and do an ultrasound scan and all the other things to determine if they're a, a risk on an airliner. Uh, and that uh, make sure that every airliner has proper marshals that have guns on them, and that we don't give hassles to our pilots to have guns that won't, number one, breach the cabin, but we'll also make sure that the people that are do things, these officers that are mostly military, can take control of business and neutralize somebody who's planning to harm the stewardesses or people within the cabin. So um, I think it's, a, it's a very essential that people kind of grasp just how bad the situation uh, could get. Uh, and what's your take on the uh, on this uh, situation in terms of the converging economic chaos and, and the drop of the dollar and gold and the bond market, which I expect to happen shortly, the fact that they're going to talk about bailing in our money into their banks rather than the bailout from the government, uh, the fact that we have a, a basically a brewing Middle Eastern war that's almost certainly going to crash the supply of oil through the Strait of Hormuz, uh, all of these things are converging to tell us that the government's willing to do almost anything, including, I know this is a fact because I work with these high-level agencies, every phone, fax, and email is constantly monitored so you know that if there's a big uh, drill, which they tried to deny, that they would absolutely be certain they would know the whereabouts of these individuals have intelligence on them and allow it to happen, at the very least. So at level number one, they'd at least let these two Chechen young men create this disaster. Level two is their wind-up toys are under much tighter control. And number three, the timing is right on Patriot Day, which is the day when the shot was heard around the world. Uh, what's your take on this situation, and uh, where do you think it's going? Because I, I, I recall now, call Super Bowl Steve, who brought out this prophetic warning a few years ago, that uh, at a major Super Bowl there'll be a new co-off. It wouldn't surprise me that uh, this is going to be amped up in the future by more advanced weapons and many more dead including a nuclear device going off at a major sporting event like a Super Bowl? Well, I think that's uh, very likely. Um, they can move these nuclear bombs around now. They're, they're much smaller than they used to be, and they're, and they're uh, you know, so that means they're more portable, and that means, you know, they can go into a suitcase. You've got a suitcase bomb. I wanted to bring to your attention that there was a, uh, an attack on the California Power Substation by a high-powered rifle. And in fact, the uh, they were going to shut down the uh, the substation. And the objective, according to the article that I'm reading, it was shutting down the system. Now, this probably was a lone, um, what they call a uh, just a solitary citizen. Uh, but some somebody uh, took a rifle and and fired at the uh, at the uh, grid operator and the. Uh, and the and the uh, substation, and uh, so uh, they think that uh, you know. I think we're going to see a lot of pile-on events, 
and some of them could be biological. I mean, who knows if somebody is is walking along the street puffing uh, puffing out a, an aroma bottle full of uh, H7N9. I mean, they still don't know how that is being spread, and and uh, we also well, there are they now put alerts all over the world now for H7N9 here in America and in Europe. Uh, to show up, and they're asking people to make sure that their doctors are actually going to do a subtypes of virus and get it off to a WHO CDC certified lab. Uh, my guess is this is the year we're going to see, along with the con- expanding war in the Middle East, the uh, concurrency war with China and these other countries, and with Japan, by the way, because they're now going to double their money supply. We uh, are on the edge of a big conflict. We, the ugly face of Islam is showing, although we're basically trying to pretend that everything is okay in it that multiculturalism is fine and that you should allow mosques to be built everywhere and it's fine to let Islam gradually expand. The Europeans are finding out the hard way where now in the Netherlands it's against the law to build these minarets so they have been screaming for miles and in, uh, various things like the veil have been removed in France. People are starting to kind of wake up but it's kind of late. It's late when you got seven million plus Muslims in France. It's uh, something that they should have smartened up earlier but they haven't realized how dangerous this is. Yeah, and it's very disheartening that this this young fellow who has been here since he was four or five uh, went to grade school and middle school and high school and is now in college and fully Americanized. Uh, well, one of the problems about being Americanized is these video games. I remember talking to the people uh, that were using the Atari games at the US Air Force Academy back in the early 80s, and they were concerned when they launched it that they couldn't turn off the kill switch. These kids are playing these things like, you know, into the world games all the time and they're extremely realistic extremely intensive and they're rewiring their brain so we're getting a cybernetic transfer and a downgrading of humanity and normal inhibitory emotional reflexes against doing something violent and the government was even encouraging this with this high level metal they were giving to cybernetic warriors using drone kills in these foreign uh, countries and some of them were would call signature kills where they weren't really sure if they're a terrorist, but if they're carrying an AK-47 and if they walk with a certain walk and wear a certain camo or whatever, we'll just kill them anyway, and we call it a signature kill. When you have a society that desensitizes young people and has this happen, and they come out of a, a broken background, and they're Muslim, praying with their butt in the air five times a day, and they see what's happening in third world countries where we do drone kills where we kill one, quote, bad guy and kill 999 men, women, and children that are in a wedding party. Uh, if, uh, if I was Muslim, I'd be pretty pissed, too. And the problem is that you get mentally unstable children who probably got multiple personality alters from the trauma they've gone through. Some of those alters are, path- are pathogenic killers and, uh, and want to go get their 72 versions. So it's not surprising these men uh, probably are social or pathologically uh, shattered. And uh, all they need is the right event to trigger it, and then they're going to start attacking citizens. So we need to start uh, cleaning up business, let's put it that way. Uh, I think we should start deporting anybody who's Muslim out of the country. We need to be having streaming lines. If you're Muslim, you're going to go through separate security. If we don't smarten up, we're going to find out what's going to happen next. It's probably a nuke going off in a city or a major sporting event. Welcome back, and uh, we have a question from Al in Western Canada. Um, Our comment, go ahead, Al. What's your comment or question? Yeah, in addition to being Muslim terrorists, these two guys in Boston are, are incredibly dumb. I, I, I don't understand what a dispute, a, a war between Moscow and a, a small, tiny republic in southern Russia has got to do with Boston. And, you know, I don't understand. Would you please explain to me why the hell are the Muslims so mad and so angry about everything? They have exclusive sovereignty over 60% of Africa. The northern half of Africa is owned exclusively by Muslims. All of Western Asia, in addition to Indonesia, Malaysia, Singapore, Bangladesh, they, they, they have about 25, 30% of the world's land mass. Nobody's, nobody's trying to take that land away from them. Why are Muslims so mad? Because they haven't got the rest of it. The, bingo! You hit, you hit the nail right on the head. Yeah, they, they, that's it. they don't have the rest of it. They, they won't stop until the whole world is, is Islamic. We have an Islamic president. We have an Islamic uh, country. Uh, by the way, in Canada, which is a communist country, I know you live there. I lived in Canada. I'm a dual citizen, born in Detroit. Uh, did a lot of my practice, early practice in Canada. Uh, Canada is a communist country. It's not just socialist. It's moving from socialism to communism. America is trying to catch up and pass Canada. 
Uh, the kinds of laws like the National Defense Authorization Act, the John Warner Defense Act, Patriot Act 1 and 2, uh, the Appropriations Act, all these other things, including the latest uh, administrative uh, kerfuffles by Obama uh, and the, uh, you know, the kill list, etc. Uh, America is, is, is the amalgam between extreme uh, Islam, Islamic kind of jihad against America as being a sovereign nation that's a Christian nation, or was, uh, and uh, basically collectivism, communism. And so what we have now is a situation where they have these two stupid uh, young men who, it doesn't even make sense, so why would they attack America? But remember now that Muslims can be good wind-up toys, which is why they make the perfect enemy. If you want to take an enemy out of the box, you know, you're going down to the local toy store, you want to get an enemy to, out of the box, the best enemies you can buy are Muslim. And the reason is that, and we talked about this before with... Uh, Theodore Shabbat and others, there's no such thing, and uh, um, Dr. Michael Kaufman, there's no such thing as moderate Islam. If you're a Muslim, you have to support all five pillars. You also have to support uh, zakat, which is a tax that pays for jihad. Jihad means a violent war against the place that you're currently living, whatever country that is. And it means if you don't subjugate them and you don't pay for this, you're not in proper position with Allah. So we have to start kind of getting realistic here. Uh, Islam is an anti-religion. It's extremely dangerous, uh, especially to the West. We uh, need to start being much more realistic. One of the things I learned as a trauma emergency doctor working in the emergency department or burn units, if you don't face reality, you have a dead patient. Well, we're going to soon have a dead country. We're destroying the economy. Well, we should be completely independent of giving any money to these dynastically wealthy uh, Saudi Arabian, Kuwaiti, and Arab Emirates, uh, uh, maniac uh, Muslims, Wahhabis. We uh, bring millions of them into our country, and Europe's even further down the road of this multiculturalism. Same thing's going on with Canada, which is becoming a, a hell of a mess. Uh, they basically have killed so many of their babies from abortion. Uh, I used to practice in Alberta, Canada, and they've done so many abortions in Canada that if they didn't have immigration, the population would be collapsing there. So... Um, the Obama under Obama, the uh, uh, situation has gotten considerably worse. We have more unemployment people, more people on the food dole, uh, and he keeps on printing money out of style, which is basically an indirect tax. And uh, out of this, we're going to have probably national security uh, agents everywhere in the background monitoring every phone, fax, email, and Twitter. And we'll have in our airports, our shopping centers, everywhere we go, we're going to have TSA agents with a fickle finger of fate and an anatomically long index finger doing body cavity searches on us before we can go and buy our hot dog and beer and go and sit down in the stadium. Um, you know, people need to wise up. Uh, you know, uh, it says in the Bible that uh, faith, uh, without faith you can't uh, please God. Well, first off, you have to pray to get faith, and faith means you have to follow through and take action. Uh, the reason why Adolf Hitler rose is not because Adolf Hitler was such a great politician, it's because people were gutless. The reason why Vladimir Lenin rose is because people were not facing the music or asking good questions or actually facing the truth of what they saw right in front of them because they weren't. They were gentle people or highly educated people and they're fully aware of what was going on. They chose to be ignorant in the face of the facts. And the Bible says, because you, ch- you love not the truth, I shall send you a great delusion. Well, we already have a great delusion. He's in the White House, he's a Muslim. He's a Satanist. He's a bisexual pedo, uh, bisexual maniac. He's a narcissistic, and he probably has multiple personalities or did. This different, uh, what's called associative identity disorder, and is a sociopath. And he lacks the ability to have genuine emotions. Although he'll have genuine emotions over the children killed in Newton, Connecticut, he doesn't have any genuine emotions for Tuesday when he sits down with a baseball card to death and kills hundreds of children, women, and other people who just happen to be in the wrong parsect of space when they want to get a quote, prospective bad guy. So, um, your comments, Al, what do you think? Call onward Muslim soldiers. Yeah, you're not Muslim though, right? No, I'm not a Muslim. No, no, I, I, I'm, a Pente- no, no. I'm a Pentecostal. But I, Right, I so here, yeah, that's, which is good. What we have to face here is we have a lack of honesty. It says my people perish for lack of vision. And the lack of vision is we don't have real leaders. We have politicians. We have people that are liars. We have church uh, pastors that basically are gutless. They won't face the facts or talk about it in their church because they think they're going to lose their tax-free status. In Canada, they have now made it such a horrendous state. If I spoke in Canada against homosexuality or against any religious group, including Islam, I would be jailed. In fact, within minutes, that's why we have a huge Canadian audience that listens to the show because I can speak as a dual citizen that's also still Canadian as well as American. 
yeah. in my home country is America. I can say these things on air now, and it's broadcast through space, through the Internet, through your phone line, etc. But if I did broadcast in any studio across Canada, I would immediately be put in jail for 5 to 20 years. In Canada, there are absolutely no laws about abortion. We have gender selection abortion like crazy up here. Among oh, yeah, the, yeah, among- yeah. You can go to Toronto, you can go to Vancouver, and they have every... You know, literally, so many streets they have ultrasound clinics where the uh, Hindu Hindus from India or the Chinese uh, from from uh, China can selectively well, we, find out if their little baby has a handle or not. If it's a, if it's a girl, they abort them. And uh, uh, Canada is an obscene country where we have lesbian couples that are using uh, state-funded uh, artificial insemination and uh, gamete intrafallopian tube transport, and they're creating a whole new class of people. They're not genetically linked uh, to biologically, and it, this is a very bizarre uh, situation. So Canada is a laboratory, just like New Zealand and Australia are laboratories with July or Gallard and the Green Party, with their forcing down the throat of the Australians, the uh, agenda dealing with the carbon tax, which is a total lie. Without carbon dioxide in the oxygen carbon cycle, you don't have oxygen, and uh, you have to feed plants uh, carbon dioxide to have oxygen in the atmosphere. If the oxygen drops below a certain level, you literally do create zombies. And in some big cities like Sao Paulo, Brazil, the concentration of oxygen can drop as low as 11%, which means your frontal lobe activity is fairly minimal. And, uh, and when I look out my window, there's four feet of snow on the ground at the end of April. And if that's global warming, I, I don't know what kind of global warming that is. And you know, Well, it, what- it, it, here's the logic. The logic is if there's climate either up or down, it's caused by global warming. If you have climate, it's like, you know, if you're still alive, it's caused by global warming. So it's just the same as a a brick, you know, how can you have a brick, which is the chlorofluorocarbons, they'll have this line. I saw it in National Geographic just a few days ago. They're still pushing this lie that chlorofluorocarbons cause destruction of the upper ozone layer when it's actually the collapse of the magnetosphere and the decrease in total uh, oxygen concentration in the environment because they're killing the oceans, cutting down the forests, and the lungs of the planet are getting chronic obstructive lung disease. So what we have is knuckleheads that are not scientists. They put in improper drivers in the nonlinear models that they have for climate change. And then they uh, push this as, a, as a, an agenda for genocide of the population, shoving us an agenda 21 to highly compact cities, rewilding the remainder and making sure that life well, extension know, technology is only for the ultra-wealthy. You, you, you know, the, the, the most dangerous greenhouse gases are the greenhouse gases coming out of Al Gore's pie hole. Exactly, exactly. Uh, and uh, do you have any comments on this? Because uh, we have a, a situation where it doesn't even make sense. And uh, I think the ultimate accomplishment of the uh, of the Obama administration is they want to see if they can then terrorize people to think, be afraid, be very afraid. Don't go to the stadium unless you're expecting the blue glove, the fickle finger of fate. Remember laugh-in? The finger, fickle finger of fate is <laughs> yeah. an anatomically long index finger and a person flicking a glove, as they say, with a joker-like grin. Just come on in. We're here to help you. This is a security zone. You can then go shopping for Christmas presents. Amazing, eh? Flick. And a little flick of the index finger and they can feel your tonsils. Welcome back, and we have a comment from uh, Glenn in Philly. Go right ahead, Glenn. You had some interesting comments about the origins of the 72 versions of Islam. Uh, yes, Dr. Bill. It's uh, what I you know, really think should be um, popularized among um, among Muslim, these young Muslim males, should be made to understand that uh, the 72 virgins, when you, when you multiply 72 times 5, you get 360. The ancient calendars were predicated on a 360-day solar year. The 72 virgins are actually the 72 five-degree increments of the ancient solar calendars, such as, you know, Babylon and, and that sort of thing. And so... And, and so it's no different than the master mason with the 33 degrees of the, of the regular compass of a master navigator. So basically it means you're now a navigator because you served Allah and you died. You're not going to get actual physical 72 virgins. What you are is you now have navigated your way to heaven, which, by the way, when they get in, the problem is you don't touch the door unless you have a, uh, one of those potholders because it's hot. Right, right. <laughs> 
Well, they, well these, these, it's a mockery of the young men who are being told this. They're, the, of course their elders it is. are laughing up their, uh, up their sleeve the whole time. They're telling these young sexually frustrated warriors, and they know that it's astrological, that it, uh, they, but they tell them this anyway. Yeah, well, uh, the, I'll tell you what the origin is. Takia and Maruna, and it's not just for external sources against Christians and Jews and anybody else who's not part of Islam. <laughs> Yeah, it's the whole idea that it, it, the high, the, there are more high-level Masons, Satanists, within Islam than there is all the other Christian, Buddhist, any other faith on earth. And uh, people need to understand that. They need to understand that Islam is the religion of the New World Order. Yeah, the, these warriors are victims, and they're being mocked with this 72 no, I'm not. And this is profound what I just said. Islam yeah, yeah. is the religion of the New World Order and the right. global New World right. Order on the entire planet. Islam is a religion that they want to push in the United Nations. They had a, a, a rip, uh, an attempt last year to have 57 Islamic nations pass a, uh, a UN charter, a UN treaty that basically every nation would then prosecute in the world, including Canada and the United States, if we sign these treaties, anybody making any negative comments against Allah or Islam. And that means they could uh, literally rendition you out of your country, torture you, and or kill you because you say negative things against Islam. And if you're in Europe, of course, the Islamics are everywhere. Uh, there's a lot of physical attacks, uh, death threats, etc. We need to stop being passive Christians and become Joshua Christians and decide to take care of business. Stop this right. crap. And, and I'm, re I'm reminded of Pike's letter to Mazzini in which he said that they would pit the atheists, read communists, again, and the Muslims against the political Zionists. One would think it would be impossible for atheist communists to collaborate with theistic, you know, um, Muslims, and yet here you have a walking, talking example of it in Obama. Well, it's a pretty because they're, even though their uh, their so-called their their dogma is different, their objectives are identical. Exactly. And, and to be honest with you, it's almost like a, a, a variation of Edward, of, uh, of uh, Mayor Amschel Rothschild. I care not about what political system I'm dealing with. I want to care about who has the money. In a sense, the real money, if you want to call it religious domination, is is uh, your objectives. It's not dogma. That's why the Pope says dogma schmagma. You know, in other words, I don't care what your dogma is. If you want to be a Greek Orthodox, you can keep it, but just make sure that you know the head of the mafia religiously is the Pope. And that's why the dialogue going on with this current pope, the Pope Francis, the black pope, the satanic pope, and the Nazi pope, is to have ecumenism where they accept Islam, and ultimately Islam would become the dominant religion of the New World Order and the new super religion. Well, ultimately I'm a global monarchist myself. Every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Exactly. Yeah. And by the way, when they say they accept Jesus and Muslims like Jesus, no, they don't. They don't like the same Jesus. Jesus is not uh, like the brother of Satan in, in Mormonism. Jesus is not lesser than Muhammad. Jesus is the incarnation of the Creator God of the universe. And what well, people don't grab that, that, yeah, we need to talk about the supremacy mind. of Christianity. Yeah. Well, it's too late then if they're, you know, there's <laughs> yeah. there's no saving a hamburger in hell. Let's put it that way. Yeah. yeah exactly. Yeah, you're, exactly. you're married to Jesus in life. You're not married on the deathbed or or afterward. Exactly. That's why the time exactly. to go to heaven is not when you die. It's now when you make a decision to serve God. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Um, you know. So, I mean, well, we uh, just continue with the Great Commission. You, you know. <laughs> well, we get. We have to. Though, we we have to stop being nice. You know. Uh, Dr. Deagle loves everybody out there listening, loves the humanity, loves uh, his fellow servants, but I absolutely won't tolerate ignorance and I won't tolerate gutlessness and I don't mind the idea of pissing people off to make sure I get through to them because the worst thing is apathy. Uh, I see so much apathy and what I call vicious stupidity where people try to pretend or even get aggressive that they think they know more than me and they don't. And it's not to be arrogant, it's to say, look, uh, you need to start facing reality because I've had this personality disorder where I have to face reality to be a good doctor, good physician, good uh, in my offices, not only as a physician but as an apostle prophet. When I speak, there's areas where I'll say I circumscribe. This is my best opinion. I don't know. But when there's things that I say, this is a thus saith the Lord, it's not open for my dispute or anybody else's. It's just the way it is. And it has to line up with the Bible or throw it out. And everybody should discern things, but they should realize when we see things like uh, the prophecies about beheading people at the time of the end, that's Muslim, mm -hmm. okay? When we see things where we see the rise of Islam and dynastic wealth supporting the uh, college, university education of our current Obaminator in the White House, that's Muslim. When we see Islam taking over Europe and the dynastic wealth of the Saudi Arabians and the Qataris and so on, directing policy in the Middle East, which is to try to start a nuclear war there, that's all Muslim. 
and we see half the Russian army is Muslim, and we see them arming all these Muslim nations, uh, and the rise of the wealth of places like Kazakhstan and the new super city of Astana, we should realize that even the great thorn in even the side of the Chinese is Islam. Islam is very well, dangerous. And once you and get then, beyond a certain then, minority, you're, they start demanding to have minarets and, and, and uh, being able to do their ceremonies in the streets, like in Paris, where they literally close down streets. Uh, you start to see you know, physical attacks against other groups, like they had to remove the Muslims from Spain many years ago because they were taking over. And it had to get eventually pretty violent in order to actually expunge them from the from the nation. It's a real big problem. And by the way, it's also a similar problem for the Sabbatean Jews, who were primarily Khazarians. They weren't really blood or genetic Jews, and they certainly weren't. They were of the synagogue of Satan, uh, and they're equally of a big problem. Uh, so we have right. a bunch of what are called satanic organizations that at the top are amalgamated together. So it's not surprising well, that and then, satanic. And then uh, yeah, go and ahead. then in the last of the last days, you couple that with some demonic pyrotechnics, and it would deceive even the elect if it were possible. So there's even more well, coming. Well, it, well, yeah, by pyrotechnics, you're thinking about lying signs and wonders. Exactly. I think that it may be much more uh, parochial, much more simple. The sign and wonder may be that we avert World War III because the, uh, the one receiving the Nobel Peace Prize and. I like the statement of a child a few weeks after where he said it must be the Nobel Peace Prize because he hasn't done anything. That's what the child said because he had a good smile. This is for Obama. And they wanted the prize back and the case back because he hasn't done anything. In fact, it's on the exact opposite. He's got kill lists. He's got uh, drone kills. Uh, in fact, the latest thing is that he and George Bush and Bill Clinton were wanted for war crimes. And uh, this fully justified. But will it ever happen? Of course not. you got Eric Holder, who's a piece of garbage. Uh, the current attorney general, he's not going to prosecute his boss. Uh, it's like, uh, you know, it's asking the lion to prosecute the lion uh, and say that they need to die. It's not going to happen. Not going to happen. That's why this is a cathartic exercise. It's a waste of time. And what we need to do is we need to stand firm on the truth. We need to say, no, you're not getting our guns. We're not going to take this any further. We're going to set up alternative uh, exchange systems. If you try to destroy our wealth and our currency, we're going to secede from the nation of states, and we're going to reform the republic. We're not going to tolerate uh, the United Nations. We're going to pull out of the U.N. Canada's even talking about it. They want to get out of the United Nations because they realize they're stupid and they're really stupid. And staying in the United Nations is really stupid. Right. Well, they, um, well they, when you redefine peace as the absence of opposition, then you can go around imposing peace. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, that, that's what Nimrod did. It says he was a mighty war in the face of the Most High God. Because what he did is he sent in the rabble to cause chaos, and then he sent his troops to clear up the rabble, but he had to make him your emperor. So that's what we have, the emperor in the White House, the usurper-in-chief, and we have the globalist banksters behind him. And uh, their idea, once they get the guns, once they get total control, then the killing fields start, and most of the population will die while they get the life extension and the cybernetic technology to explore the stars as demigods. I call the Spider-Man generation is here. It's, I think it's kind of interesting that the uh, religion sanctioned in the chapel of the UN is the Baha'i thing. So it's just kind of a curveball. But, you know, they do seem to be supporting Islam quite a bit these days. Why do you think they support Baha'u'llah? They think they came back in the 1890s and he's still here. Why do you think that is? Mm, don't know. That's a topic for another show. Okay. But I'll give you my, I'll give you my take. It's a... The center for it and their main temple is in Haifa, Israel. Did you know that? Oh, no. Uh-uh. Yes. Some un un and Haifa, Israel is one of the, uh, the monuments is the tex in Texmar's book. It's right. And also you have to understand it's the end of the Valley of Jezreel goes right to Haifa. And the uh, mm -hmm. the uh, Leviathan oil fields, gas fields are off the coast or right off of the coast of Haifa. And uh, the main oil supply on the planet, the largest basilisk on Earth, is just down through that valley over the mound called the Mound of Har Magedo, all the way to the to the uh, Dead Sea. And that and that brings us to Psalm 83. There you go. All right. Thanks. God bless. Doctor. Amazing. Bye. Thank you, Ann. Thank you, John. Thank you. Uh, and we'll be back. Again, callers are welcome.